Okay, in this tutorial for beginning Blender users, I'll show you some more of my editing techniques for modeling these things. So here's an airplane I modeled the other night. And in the old days, if you wanted to model an airplane, I remember you had to go into here and you'd create a loop and maybe another loop and then you'd bridge the vertices between them like this. So for instance, if I was in edge select mode here, I'll just make a copy of this with Alt right click and then shift alt right click like that shift D to copy it and then press P to separate by selection leave edit mode then I'll right click on that object so there I have those two new loops and all I did was I left this loop out of here so with those two loops selected you can come down here or you go into edit mode and with them selected you come into edges and you come down here and you bridge the edge loops this is relatively new within the last couple of versions of blender and so that's a nice way to be able to make certain objects because sometimes it's hard to model surfaces like this that have, you know, that are varying in shape everywhere. I mean, this is coming up to a circular surface up like this. So you can try any trick in the book that you want. Sometimes you can work over here, for instance, like this. Now I have two separate objects, a circle and a plane. This is a regular plane, but I took the face out of it. So in this case, what I can do, is I can try and join these together, control J and go into edit mode and I'm going to try and bridge those together here and it does but you can see how it's had to match all of these to those individual points so there's like one two three four it looks like eight eight to one ratio it's doing on there so and that doesn't work really well because if you try and do a loop cut and slide which is one of my most favorite editing techniques I do control R I can't never breaks into it. So let's see if we can fix that a little bit. Let's control Z that. All right. And then I'm in edit mode, deselect. I'll just select this. So that's four. Subdivide should be eight. Go into vertex select. That's eight. W, 16W, 32. That should be 32 and 32. Right. So then when I press A and A and then do the bridge loop, Let's see, so now it looks like it's matched up to each vertex on the other side. So now theoretically, if I do control R, now it's now it knows about it, right? So now I can use this. And this is great because now I can go from a cube, I mean from a square to a circle. And that really, you know, gives me some advantage in here. Maybe I do S shift Y and scale this up. And so that's a pretty powerful technique for being able to do things, as long as you have the same number of vertices, obviously. All right. So now let's take a look, look at something else. I tend to model vertex by vertex. So I'll start with a basic shape. Like when I start a scene, I'll start like this. I'll start shift A and I'll put a cube in the scene. And then in here, maybe in face select mode, I'll come over here and I'll control R. Let's cut it this way. I'll just cut that. And then uh, in here, I'll grab a face and press EX and extrude that out like that. And then maybe EX again. And then maybe I'll control R. This is a very common way for me to work. And then EZ. And then maybe this is my basic shape that I have formed in here. Then a lot of cases, what I'll do is I'll just grab everything and I'll maybe subdivide it like crazy something like that or I'll use loop cut and slide and subdivide it and then I'll go get this here so I can see both sides turn everything off press B get those let's see oops I want to be in vertex select typically vertex select mode is what I work in like that I'll grab those and then maybe use my proportional editing tool and then I want to scale maybe not on Z but so S shift to Z and I'll scale that down like this maybe I start making my basic surface like that but it always turns out that at some point in time I either it doesn't look right or it's not curving the way it works and so then I, almost always I come back into here and I'm just editing vertex by vertex so when I converted this to a circle up at the front then I want to try and make all these lines converge nicely up to here so I try and keep everything nicely spaced between here and here and going this way as well so if you see here, see like this vertex, I'd probably move that vertex up a little bit like that. I'd look straight down each one of these lines. Yeah, you see that one's a little bit low. So I'd get that one on that side and I'd get one on the other side. 
and then I'd just lift it up a little bit. So I'd actually like to work that way. So I, I'll meticulously go through this entire model at some point and I'll just kind of smooth it out, scaling it and moving each vertex, uh, you know, one or two vertices at a time, usually two vertices at a time. I'll get that one and then I'll get the one there and then it's this one there like that. And so I have them both like this. Sometimes when you, if you don't want to match it, then I'll just go inside the model like this. I'll cruise inside and then I know I have the matching vertex like this. And then I'll press S, Y, and then I can scale accordingly. If I don't have, if I turn off my proportional editing S, Y, and then I can scale like this. That gives me a lot of flexibility as far as building this model. So then as I'm building it, the other thing that I do is here I have my GLSL lights set. This is GLSL materials and these are GLSL lights in this layer down here. And then a lot of times I'll take a copy of this model and I'll copy it up to another layer. So let me go look at this layer over here. So here's the same model. The difference is this has cycles based materials and cycles based lighting. Which There's my cycles light and these have all been converted to cycles light on this layer as well. And you'll see that if I go into cycles render mode here, it's an emission light instead of just a point light. So I convert it over. The best way is to start is to start with your lights here in Blender render. So be in Blender render mode when you add it. And then when you switch over to cycles render mode, then you can just switch and say use nodes and it'll switch it over for you after you, well, I actually take a copy of the lights, move them over here, and then just switch it over. So then I can work in here and I can go into rendered mode, and then I can see the results of the rendering in cycles as well. So I'm kind of working back and forth at any given time between the two, because I'm working, I'm always working with game engines or cycles, full rendering type projects. So, and then another thing I'll do is, as I keep building the model, this one doesn't need a lot of detail, so this is going to go far away in the scene. So then I usually have a scene open at the same time, like over here. Here's my city scene for another game project that I'm working on. Let's render this here in cycles. And there are the planes in there. And that kind of gives me an idea of what it looks like in this environment as well. So those are kind of just general, that's my general workflow that I use. Detail really matters in these models when they're up close. I can't emphasize enough, you know, good detailed models really can bring your scene to life versus, you know, like there's some, like there is something missing I can see in this fire truck right here. Let's just go look at it. You can see. We'll just let it render. And something that's obvious to me is that it's these edges here. I can see they're on the front of this cab, that edge, that edge, these edges here, these edges right there, and that edge there, I can see they're still too sharp. It means I don't have those edges beveled right there. Whereas if you look back here at these, these are softer, so there's, it's reflecting more light at different angles. So I know for sure I have beveled edges on these surfaces like that. So hard edges are really uh, terrible for nice finished renderings because you know like a piece of wood is not hard razor sharp at the corner you know so most things have reflect a lot more light all right well so hopefully that helps with your projects and every little bit helps and okay well that's it for now and i'll see you in the next video